so um, yeah, my name is Willa. Um, I'm going to be talking about AI music generation um, today. So just a disclaimer to start off, I am by no means an expert. I, um, my knowledge of AI and machine learning pretty much extends to what we have learned in the grad program and uh, of course what ChatGPT could tell me. <laughs> Um, but I do, however, know a lot about music. Um, I use music technology on a day-to-day -day basis. And I, prior to becoming a software developer, I got a degree in uh, film analysis, um, specifically focusing on movie, uh, on uh, music. So that's kind of the scope of my knowledge. So what is AI music generation? I think there's a lot of, um, hype around AI these days. Um, so I kind of wanted to do something that was a little more niche, but still kind of poking the AI dragon, so to speak. Um, so uh, music, uh, AI in uh, music involves the use of artificial intelligence to create, compose, or enhance music production um, and music compositions. And I think it represents a really interesting niche of uh, the fusion of technology and art. Because um, it, like, computers can be like, creative, right? Like, in a very interesting, unique way. Um, and I think it's awesome to explore that. So, uh, that being said, um, I'd like to introduce Jukebox, which is OpenAI's um, attempt at uh, AI music generation, um, and it's it's conditions um, the music based on artist and genre, um, and you can optionally uh, specify lyrics for it. And it's a model that uses a, a neural network uh, to generate music. Um, due to the technical limitations of this medium of presentation, I can't actually uh, this like. Uh, present audio, but I highly suggest going to Jukebox um, uh, on the A Open AI site. It has some really um, cool content there. Um, you can you can listen to some really wild stuff. Um, basically, they have uh, a few different collections: the uh, Being Unseen, uh, a re-rendition, and Completion. Unseen being a um, is a wide variety of music styles and singing styles and it's called unseen because it's unseen lyrics the lyrics aren't seen during training um so when the 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 lyrics are given to the model post training and the model develops songs around that based on the other inputs of artists and genre um there are re-renditions which are seen lyrics during training and then the the uh, model develops the song based on the artist and genre again, based on the lyrics that it's seen, um, which is quite a different output from the unseen uh, training. The um, Then the next is completions, which is honestly my favorite, where the model is given 12 seconds of audio and they have to complete the rest of the song. And it's pretty wild. Like I like highly suggest going onto the site and listening to those. They, they're really fun. <laughs> Um, so what is actually like good, bad and ugly about this? Because it's, it's honestly a great effort, but it's on, not perfect. So the good is that it opens new doors for creativity. Uh, I, th I think uh, that it's really cool that it efficiently automate, it, it could efficiently automate mundane tasks and allow for um, higher order creative decisions by the um, creatives involved. The bad is that it sounds pretty bad. Uh, it's, it's in order to like um, perform at the level it does, it has to really dumb down the music in the uh, quality sense. And like, we're talking like early 2000s illegal music download quality. It's, it's quite awful, but <laughs> that being said, it's very, um, it's still quite impressive what it manages to come up with. Um, 
another bad is the bias in in training data you're not gonna get your like unique soundcloud rapper like as an artist input it, it's it's popular music that being said there are a, a wide range of genres like uh i'm personally a metal head and i managed to find like a uh, quite a, a lot of metal on there, which was pretty um, unexpected. Um, the ugly is, where is this heading? Like, there's so much fear around AI at the moment. Um, and honestly, I don't know. But all I know, all that I do know is that it's happening very quickly. And um, there's already a lot of uh, regulatory challenges that we are facing. And I think that it's important that we try to have those moving at the same speed, if not greater than the speed that AI is moving. Another ugly element are all deep fakes and uh, manipulation. You know, how do we um, control how this affects people and their day-to-day -day lives? And how do we ethically separate AI from humans? Um, and that, of course, brings me to jobs. That's a, a huge uh, topic when it comes to AI. So AI versus the composer, like what's, what are the pros and cons? Um, AI uh, is of course very efficient. It can uh, generate really um, interesting music based on uh, limited input. It does, though, if you listen to the jukebox compositions, it does have this facade of music. It's it's difficult to explain, but when you listen to it, it can it's it it feels like like they go they they like it's it's music, but there's there's something off. I watched a talk recently um, where there were talking about the hallucination-like nature of AI, which I thought was really interesting. The fact that a, a, a art generated by AI can often give this dream-like impression where it feels like you're looking at uh, real art, real music, but it's, it feels off. Something just doesn't feel quite right. Um, and of course, hiring a composer, like a professional composer, takes us away because they bring in the humanity that AI struggles with. But that being said, I don't think using AI is, an, is um, inherently bad. I think that it's important for companies to be transparent about their content. Um, and if whether they're using AIs, what, like what roles do humans play in this? Um, but I do think that there are a lot of awesome collaboration opportunities. You know, uh, any good artist keeps up to date with the current technology available to them. And I think that um, the, the, the window for the use of music uh, with AI is, is, quite, is really interesting. I think there's going to be some really cool things. But I think an important consideration is always like whether production companies and other higher ups will favor uh, cost over ethical use of AI. And I think that's moving, I think that moving forward, it's a very important consideration that we all need to make. Um, so <laughs> my cat has decided to join the presentation. Um, so let like right now, I've just been speaking about Jukebox, which is a generative AI and creating raw audio from the ground up based on the training data. But what about non-generative uses? Because uh, surely ground up audio creation can't be the only use, right? So yeah, that's a correct assumption. There are a lot of other uses, one of which is the new AMP modeler. I actually use this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it is an awesome piece of technology. I use this in music production, uh, which it is a um, it is a guitar amplifier simulator, um, where it takes in a raw electric guitar signal and uh, models the output to be like a like it is a 
a legitimate guitar amplifier and it's um it involves the training of um of many of the of many sounds of guitar amplifiers and guitar effect pedals and the outcomes are pretty interesting um it's uh it, i think it's really cool because it's quite different from typical uh dsp or digital signal processing techniques uh where you you modify the input based on uh replication like uh, algorithmic replications of uh analog signal manipulation and it's it, it it's quite a it's quite something i think it sounds really amazing um compared to um some dsp alternatives um but honestly <laughs> With all of this hype on AI, is it is it really that new? Like, is the use of algorithms and uh, and generation like algorithmic generation in music new? Um, and I I'd argue that it isn't. Uh, if you go back all the way to uh, Bach's music. Um, he, he displayed uh, incredible use of um, algorithms in his in his music the way he wrote harmony the way he wrote structure was very algorithmic um there's a famous piece by him called the goldberg variations uh which showed a which displayed a single aria um for the non-musicians an aria is essentially a song uh and he wrote 30 variations of that based on different mathematical principles and different compositional techniques, which is like very generative in, in my opinion. It's really, uh, it's really interesting listening to how many variations can come from a single idea based on different algorithms applied to it. The, the, second, uh, the second use of like of uh, math in music and gener generative algorithms in music is uh, aleatoric music, otherwise known as uh, indeterminate music or chance music. Uh, and to me, it's the math.random of music creation. It's really quite interesting. Uh, uh, of, uh, uh, a famous use of that would be um, pieces that were written and uh, parts handed were handed to performers who would then um, who would then based on random outcomes of dice and other uh, random randomization techniques they would play the parts at different times and in different orders and at different speeds uh, with the aim of completely generating new music randomly um, this is quite a popular um, movements within the in the mid uh, 20th century and it's really interesting to listen to um, so in conclusion um, we've covered a lot of topics about AI um, and in music um, and I think the the overall takeaway uh, or takeaway is to consider the implication of AI um, the the idea of um, of automation in art isn't new, and I think that moving forward, it's important to take a a critical thinking perspective and to ensure that what you're listening to is transparent, and to make make sure that um your use of ai is transparent and your use of ai is ethical <laughs>